Hey y'all, I'm Pam with 44 Marketplace. And if today's your first visit to my channel, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. Please take a minute to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. And keep in mind, I try to put a material list in the comments below each one of the videos. If I miss something, please let me know. Okay, let's get started. Thing. Typically, I don't go live in the afternoon, but I get lots of questions about painting brown furniture and bleed through and things like that. So I kind of wanted to go over some things right quick. Uh, first thing I'll tell you is I know a lot of you guys use a lot of slick stick and I don't um, because I learned how to paint before Dixie Belle had slick stick. And second of all is a lot of you guys use a lot of boss. I get questions about boss daily and I don't use a lot of boss, but now I also don't do a ton of sanding. And I know a lot of you guys feel like boss or slick stick needs to be used on just about every single piece. And I don't really get that logic, but it's everybody to each their own, you know? Um, but uh, those of you who sand, sometimes you're causing yourself to have to use boss or something because you break through that original shell. And so I'm gonna show you the way I do tops. If you follow me, you know that typically I spray a lot. And I think a lot of people think that I don't brush and I do brush. Um, when I'm brushing my tops, I've seen a lot of people that brush to their sides and it causes puddling. If you brush against it, I brush to my sides. Uh, so that I don't cause the puddling that can happen. Uh, I don't brush in against my sides. I brush out toward my sides. That way I'm not causing a puddle on these edges. I like to brush to my sides. Now everybody, like I say, does their own thing, but I like to brush to my sides. I don't brush in against my sides because I know when I first started, if you do that, you'll cause a lot of puddling from time to time. So we're gonna finish this top up right quick and then we're gonna do the blend on the side. If you guys watched me Monday night, I did the front with Fiona and I'll show you where we are with the front. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do the first one, the first coat on this one side and then I'll show you what I did to the other side. And you guys can be a judge for yourself. Okay, all right. So what is everybody doing today? I have a, an activity at church shortly. So I have to get home and get dressed. As you can tell, I am a mess, which is usual when I'm painting, um, which is where I'm most comfortable anyway. So there's that. All right, so we finished up this top. You can see that I brushed to the edges and that's only the first coat. I always like to use the second coat on there. And um, I like to start at the top and go down. That way I don't splash and sploosh and whatever. And if you've got friends that you want to see this, please feel free to let them know that we're live today and pass this along. All right, so this piece, I've got Sawmill Gravy, which is this top color. And then I also have French Linen, which is my next color. And then it goes all the way down to Vintage Duck Egg. So I have a customer who bought the companion piece to this and I painted it Vintage Duck Egg and I used the Moonshine Metallics on the insets and that's what we're gonna be doing to the front of this one. So I'm gonna tilt you guys down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right. I am using a Dixie Belle oval brush I like to use that because it holds a lot of paint and it makes it very easy to get my first coat on. My piece was originally cleaned with Dixie Belle White Lightning, which I know a lot of people don't use. I'm not really sure why because it cleans and deglosses so well, but that's my cleaner of choice. And I, I just really like the, the job that it does on my pieces because I can, feel of my pieces, oh, got a piece of trash. I can feel the difference in my pieces after I've cleaned and before I've cleaned, it makes a huge difference. All right, if you've ever followed me, you know that when I'm blending, I uh, don't like it to be that precise, especially on the sides, I want a more organic feel to mine. So I don't care what it, where it is on the front. I just kind of like to 
do my sides a little bit more organic. And yes, I do miss my brush a lot, even on my first coat, because I like for my colors to really melt together, even on the first coat. Now, typically I do spray my base coat and I, my base coat is usually a single color. But since I'm brushing this piece, I figured I'd brush it through and through. So I didn't even spray a base coat on it. So like I say, this first color up top is Sawmill Gravy. Second coat down is uh, the new Dixie Belle French Linen, which I gotta say I'm, in, I'm absolutely in love with. And I'm gonna tilt you guys down a little bit farther so you can see hopefully what I'm doing. And I've already put some vintage duck egg down here on the bottom just when I painted the legs so that it would kind of go through there. And keep in mind, typically once I do the sides, I'll redo this corner panel so that I can make sure I get what I want. So I can get the blend there that I want. Even though I've already got my two coats on there, my brush will wrap around the edges from time to time. And that's fine with me because I'm going to make sure it's the way that I want. And I know a lot of people said they take their drawers out when they paint. And I get that. I totally get that. But um, when I'm doing a blend, I find that I get a, a better wrap around the edges and everything. Doing my blend this way with the drawers intact. And then once I've gotten my blend set up and I've got all my paint dry from my blend, then I'll take the drawers out and I'll make sure that they flow the way that I want them to. So we've got our vintage duck egg. Now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna blend the French linen into the vintage duck egg. And I just keep my brush damp. That way it kind of melts the two of them together. And like I say, now this is just my first coat. So there'll be a second coat of the blend here. And I'm gonna lift you up a little bit, maybe. All right, there we go. All right, so now you can see that the French linen kind of blends into the sawmill gravy. And I like to carry it up a little higher so that when I bring the sawmill gravy down into the French linen, it's definitely a more organic feel. And the brushes that I'm using are Dixie Belle brushes. I'm using Dixie Belle ovals for the French linen and the sawmill gravy. And I'm using a Dixie Belle Mini for the vintage duck egg. And again, I like to just take my top coat and pull it down into the second one. And this is my first coat of the blend, huh? I don't know if you guys can see me. There we go. So, like I say, when you're doing the top, you wanna make sure that you are getting all of these little edges done well and everything like that. Make sure you get where the corner meets and such as that. All right, so you can see that I have the first one going into the second one. So that way, everything kind of has a little bit of a flow to it. And I know a lot of people like to use a dry brush to blend their colors in, and that's just not the way I do it. So to each his own. I say do whatever works best for you. I've tried it that way and it just does not work out well for me. All right, so now I'm gonna grab you guys up and I'm gonna show you where we are. All right, so there is our side and I'm gonna grab you off this tripod if I can and see, all right. So there's our front that we did while we were with Fiona the other night and you can see how it flows and how the sides are kind of go up a little bit and everything and I still have to add the metallics to the details. And then we're gonna show you this side over here. This side over here has two coats on it and you can see how it, it just kind of flows up through the base color all the way through. All right, so. I'm gonna sit you back up here so that you guys can see. All right, so you can see, oh, maybe not. Maybe it isn't gonna sit up here now for some reason. All right, sorry about that, guys. Gonna make you drunk as a skunk, aren't I? All right, so if you 
if you guys have questions, like I say, I really want to make sure you guys know about the top. Um, the front of it's already dry to the touch. Another thing to remember, if when you put your hand on your paint, your paint still feels cool, it is not dry. Even if it's dry to the touch, if you can still feel cool, it is not dry. So keep that in mind when you're painting. A lot of times it may feel dry to the touch, but it may not actually be dry. So keep in mind when you're brushing these tops, you're gonna get a much smoother finish if you brush out to the edges versus brushing against the edges. Brush out. And it's just gonna give you a smoother finish. And another thing to remember, if you notice brush strokes, don't panic about it. Let it dry, don't mess with it while it's wet. Just let it dry and once it dries out some, then you can take a 320 grain and smooth and it'll be as smooth as a baby's bottom. It'll be great. Um, Dixie Belle's Gator Hide, you can always sand that as well. Uh, I love Gator Hide on the top of the piece. I think it is just a, it, it's just a great durability factor for it. But if you opt not to use Gator Hide, whatever you use, use a finishing pad over the top of it. Because I'm telling you, a finishing pad is invaluable. And if you guys haven't seen one, they're white and most of the Dixie Bell retailers carry them. Now, everybody may not tell you to use them, but they are amazeballs, let me assure you. If you haven't tried one, it looks almost like a white Brillo pad, and normally I have one, but I don't see one right here in front of me. Uh, they are amazing, and when I get to the point of finishing this piece, I will show you what we're gonna do. I like to use it after I put my final coat of clear coat on here, and because I spray most of my clear coats, sometimes after you spray them, you can feel kind of like a little prickly. I don't know how else to explain it, except that it's a little prickly. And I like mine to be smooth. In fact, when I go and look at furniture in other antique malls and things like that, I not only look at the finish, but I like to feel of the finish and see how smooth it feels. I don't know if you guys do that or I, I'm just a weirdo, you know? But that's what I like to do, and it always makes a difference if when I rub, rub my hand across the furniture, if it feels nice and smooth. It's just almost like a waxed car. How many of you guys have ever waxed a car? I'm that girl, you know? If you've met me, you know that. And it is amazing the way it feels when you, when you take the time to do that. So again, I'm gonna recap what we used on this. We used Dixie Belle's Sawmill Gravy and French Linen, which is two of their new colors, and Vintage Duck Egg, which is, I don't know about your area, it's a favorite for mine. But I just wanted to go over because I knew a lot of people have been messaging me about Boss, and I'm really not a resident expert on Boss because typically I don't use Boss that much. But I will remind you guys, I know that I see a lot of people say they boss their piece so that it would have more of a tooth for paint. Boss is not for adhesion. Boss is to block odors, stains, and bleed through. So Boss is not made for adhesion. So when you hear people say that they use Boss to give their piece a tooth, that's just a personal preference for them because Boss is not made for adhesion. Slick Stick is the product that Dixie Bell makes for adhesion, and it is for adhesion. And I know I have people send me a message from time to time, which should they use first, Boss or Slick Stick, if they're using both? Well, it's really an anomaly if your piece requires both of the problem solvers, but if your piece is that anomaly, make sure you use Slick Stick first. Slick Stick is the product that Dixie Bell made for adhesion issues. Boss is not made for adhesion, just blocking odors and stains. So. I'm gonna let you guys go. I have got to go get ready for my little church activity. It's a volunteer activity. And I've gotta re-blend this side. I gotta put one more coat on right quick. Thanks for tuning in today. And like I say, if you know a friend that wants a, has a question about this, please share this. Thanks so much.